Happy Easter! Or should, or as we say in the church, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Thank you for joining us for What is a Lutheran and here at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana, Pastor Fred. And today we're talking about the biggest day of the Christian year, Easter. Now, most people think of Christmas as the biggest day of the Christian year, um, but it's really Easter. Christmas, which of course celebrates the birth of Christ, um, God coming into our world, um, is a big holiday. But it really didn't become big until about the 7th or 8th century AD. Kind of a Johnny come lately. Well, Easter was pretty much celebrated from day one. Now, it wasn't that Christ's death, or I'm sorry, Christ's birth, <laughs> was looked upon as unimportant, um, but it just wasn't as big as the resurrection, which you know, actually paid for our sins and, and gave us that hope of, of new life. So today I'm filming on Monday, Thursday, uh, which is the day, of course, that Christ instituted the Last Supper and also was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then tomorrow on Good Friday, he was crucified and, and died and was buried for us. And then um, Easter Sunday, the third day, is when he rose from the dead, declaring victory over sin, death, and the devil. The importance of uh, Easter is brought out by Paul when he says, if there's no resurrection, then, well, we are to be the most pitied of all men, that we're still in our sin. In other words, there's no salvation without the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The resurrection of Christ is essential to Christianity. Without it, there's no Christianity. All we got is pretty much just a good story about some guru who spoke well, did a lot of amazing things, eventually was killed, and stayed dead. That doesn't help anybody, right? Except if you want to read a good story. There are several things that are interesting about Christ's resurrection. Uh, for instance, the Jewish Sabbath. Uh, that was a day of rest, and that was a day of worship for them, and that was on the seventh day. Now, when you look at a calendar, what is the seventh day? Saturday, right? Um, but Jesus rose on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. We also say, um, looking at Old Testament theology, that he rose on the eighth day of the week, which is, in many cases, looked upon as the first day of the new creation. Point is forward to the new heavens and the new earth, in other words, the kingdom of God, eternity. The eighth day plays an important role in, 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 in Scripture, for, and, and we brought that out in some, some of our liturgical practices, in particular, our baptismal fonts. Freestanding baptismal fonts generally have eight sides to them, pointing forward to that person's being baptized in the death and resurrection of Christ and into that, into that future glory. It's also, in large part, why Christians chose to worship on Sunday instead of staying with the Jewish Sabbath on, on Saturday. Everything was new in Christ, so they started worshiping on Sunday. Now, that's not a requirement that we worship on Sunday or anything like that. Um, it's just what they started doing and We've continued it um, as tradition. The most important thing to remember about the resurrection is that it's a bodily resurrection, a physical resurrection. It wasn't just some spiritual resurrection. Jesus made a point of showing his disciples he was not just a ghost. He allowed them to touch him. He ate with them. They physically saw uh, food go into his body. But he also walked through doors and, and just appeared. So it was a physical resurrection. And it shows us that our salvation is not just a spiritual salvation, but also one involving our body. Um, and that in heaven, we will have a solid body along with our spirit. And it shows us that, you know, um, the defeat of sin was not just a spiritual defeat of sin, but a bodily defeat of sin. So on Easter, we celebrate the fact that Christ died for our sins, our failures, our mistakes, our bad actions, our bad thoughts on the cross, that his blood fully paid for them, that he suffered all the pain we were supposed to suffer for all of our sins. He suffered the very pains of hell for us, in fact. But that death could not hold him. And that he rose again from the dead uh, to show that he was who he was, who he said he was. That he, he claimed to be the Son of God, and that he was God in human, human form. And that he won that victory for us. So Jesus' resurrection also shows us that. It also shows us that we will be bodily raised from the dead as well. I also like to think of, of the resurrection as kind of like a receipt. Um, you know, you go into a restaurant or any place and you buy something and you pay your money and then they give you a receipt which proves that you paid for it. 
Well, um, Christ goes to the cross. He dies for our sins. Um, and he pays the price. And then the resurrection is the receipt. Because it shows us that truly he paid the price. Um, and that sin and death couldn't hold him. And he popped back up, as we could say. Um, and he's defeated all those things. And otherwise, if he hadn't rose from the dead, we'd always wonder, was it enough? But now we know it is enough because he rose from the dead. Now, many people have tried to disprove the resurrection, but no one, no one has ever been able to do it. For instance, some have said that the body was stolen. And, and that's the story that the Jewish leaders tried to push, which, interestingly enough, shows that the body was gone, and they knew it was gone, and they had to come up with an explanation um, for, for why it was gone. And, of course, uh, you know, he was put in a stone cave, and a stone was rolled in front of it in a regard, so the fact that his body was stolen just doesn't hold water. Or some said, well, Jesus um, just seemed to be dead, but, you know, in the cave he woke up and recovered and walked out. Let's see. Whipped 40 times with a whip that contained rocks and glass, um, literally tearing body parts out. And then spikes are put through his wrists and ankles, and a spear is jabbed into his side. Then he's laid in, laid in a cave with the stone in front. Somehow he gets up, removes a heavy stone, gets past the soldiers, and checks himself into the ICU at a hospital. No, actually, no hospital, no ICU, plus all that other stuff doesn't add up either. So, um, no, it doesn't work. And not only that, but the disciples, um, after this resurrection, um, um, go and preach about him for the rest of their lives. And they did that because, number one, after his resurrection, he appeared to them several times for 40 days. And then, according to Paul, he appears to 500 people at once. So, um, the, the evidence for the resurrection is pretty solid, I think we'd have to say, right? So, it's coming Sunday. We are having a big celebration at church, including we're going to have the choir sing. The color for Sunday will be white, pointing to the forgiveness and the purity of our purity that we have through, through Christ's death and resurrection. We'll also have Easter lilies um, there, which I can smell from across the room. It's where we're storing them right now. And um, Easter lilies represent the resurrection. Also, they represent purity. And so we'll be having those. And we'll have the Alleluias back. We took out all the Alleluias for Lent. Somber time, no Alleluias. Now the Alleluias will be back. And also the Gloria in Excelsis as we praise God. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And for all of you who gave up something for, for Lent, uh, well, it's time you can start doing it again, particularly if you gave up coffee, which I didn't, and I hope some of you didn't either. So come and join us um, at 8.30 for our traditional service or 10.45 for our contemporary uh, blended service. We'll also be having breakfast starting at 9 a.m. in our gym and followed by an Easter egg hunt for the kids. Be lots of fun and lots of rejoicing. So Easter's it. Everything rides on it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Peace out.